In this video, I want to briefly cover Hebrew verb stems. Now, this is something that Greek doesn't do. It's kind of fun, uh, and uh, again, it plays to the intuitive uh, soul, the person that enjoys um, the kinds of uh, guessing and intuition uh, that is part of, of uh, the Hebrew language. But um, what are stems? Stems in Hebrew are ways that can modify the way some basic action of the verb plays out. And um, now, if you, if you study word fallacies, there is, there is a fallacy that basically says you can't assume that, the root, that there is some root meaning to a word that plays itself out every time a word is used. And a word of caution with Hebrew is that it, it may very well be the case that a word has a completely different meaning uh, in a stem, in one stem, than it has in another one. We, we can't rule that out. It's not an absolute. You won't, this, the stem modifications that we're about to talk about here don't always work. Sometimes learning what a Hebrew word means in one stem is almost a matter of just learning a completely different definition. Language is unpredictable. Nevertheless, there does seem to be some pattern uh, that is pretty consistent in Hebrew. And so Hebrew is one of those languages that wants to play out a core meaning uh, sometimes in, in different forms, or at least it seems that way. We have to be careful not to take that as an absolute, um, but it does seem to work a lot of the time. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, just keep watching and, and hopefully you'll have a kind of, oh, that's what he was talking about uh, moment. Uh, so we should allow for the possibility that uh, a different stem simply has a different definition and we just memorize it. Uh, but it is also um, the case that sometimes uh, a basic meaning is modified by putting, it, putting a word in one or another kind of stem. The basic stem in Hebrew, this is the nothing change stem. This is the, the, the grundstamm, the, the G stem. This is the the I've not modified the meaning in any way yet. This is just the basic meaning of this word. Now again, we can't count on it always being the same. Uh, Hebrew wasn't designed by a German committee. Uh, Hebrew evolved and, and uh, words do what words do. And, and our, our, uh, there ain't nothing our English teachers can do about it. Languages flex and change. And so uh, uh, even though we say that the call stem is the starter stem. This is the one we get before we put any of the add-ons. You know, this is before we upgrade. Uh, this is the the uh, 1.0. Uh, we're not even to the beta yet. You know, um, uh, even though we say those kinds of things, there are some words where the basic starting point is an is a different stem. Uh, and so again, language wasn't designed by a committee. Uh, it 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 the people talked and patterns emerged from their talking. But let's go ahead and say that the call stem or the G stem is the starter uh, stem, the place to begin. And you might remember in the previous video on verb tenses that when we looked at that page from the parsing guide, there was a column for the stem and call uh, was, was there, like the first word um, of the um, uh, Hebrew Bible, or second, second the first verb, um, the a normal verb of the of the Hebrew Bible is bara, and, and it is a call or G stem, the unchanged basic he created stem. So the call stem is the starting point, the unchanged, unaltered, perfect, or imperfect. Now by unchanged, I don't mean you don't have letters on the end or letters on the front, like the perfect having the person and number on the end, or the imperfect having the person and number on the on the front, as in the previous video. I'm not, I don't mean that by unchanged. I mean that the stem has stem itself has not been modified in the ways of the rest of this video. So um, here is uh, first the imperfect, if you're going from right to left. Uh, yiktol, that's the basic call stem, G stem, that we saw in the previous video for the imperfect. And then katal, the second word there on the right, um, is the basic G stem uh, call stem perfect form. So, call stem the place to begin. There are, however, many other stems. Let me just go through them uh, first and then come back to what they um, look like a little bit. You don't have to know what they look like because there's so many cheats uh, available uh, that you can um, look it up. 
but um, just to give you a feel for these other stems, let's, let's look at some of them. There is the nifal or N stem. It tends to make uh, whatever the G stem is, the call stem, it tends to make it passive. Um, and so then there's the PAL uh, stem, sometimes called the D stem. Uh, just a, one way to think of it is to put, to put a word in the D stem uh, is, means that the verb is, is putting something into the G. Uh, so if, if, um, if the G stem meant to break, then the D stem might mean to shatter, as in to put into a broken uh, state. Um, some debate on these sorts of things. The pu'al is the passive of the D stem. So if, if the PL means to break, uh, then the pu'al means to be broken, um, kind, of, kind of like that, um, or to be shattered. Um, sorry, if, if the D stem means to shatter, then the DP stem, the, the pu'al, would mean to be shattered. The hith pile, or HTD stem, is the reflexive of the D. Notice that these three go together. PL, pu'al, hith pile, those three stems all go together, as you can see in the D. D stem, DP, D passive stem, HT, D stem. And by the way, the, the HT gives you some hint of what it looks like. So, um, um, if if the if the if the G means to break, uh, and the nifal means to be broken, then the PL means to put into a broken state or to shatter, and the DP would be to be shattered, and the hith pile would be to shatter oneself uh, or something like that reflexive. Um, that's so. Th so there's three that go together: PL, pu'al, hith pile, um, just like the G and the N stem are kind of like um, active and passive. Now the last two then are uh, another collection, the hyphial or H stem, which means to cause um, the G stem or to cause X to do the G stem. So you could say he caused Jimmy uh, to break the jar. Uh, that would be an H kind of thing. Um, and then the hofal is the passive of the hyphial so the HP stem uh, to cause Jimmy to be broken or something like that. So that's an overview of the stems. You see, see get, you get the concept now? The idea is that by, um, so like putting an N on the front uh, or the D stem doubles the second consonant um, or putting an H, T and doubling the second consonant or putting an H on the front. By, by making these modifications to the basic three letter stem you change the nuance of, of the verb. Now, sometimes it works nice and neatly in the way that I just said it's modified, and sometimes it does its own thing, and you just have to memorize that in the H stem, this word means this. But the H stem will generally have some kind of a causative um, flavor to it. OK, um, let me go through the forms a little bit here, and just one more time in a little bit more detail uh, so that you can kind of see what's what's going on here. Okay, so the nifal stem, as I said, is is the passive or reflexive stem of, of the G. And uh, so he was killed would be a perfect tense example of it. Notice the tense and stem are two different things. The tense has to do with the kind of action, uh, whether it is uh, completed or incomplete, or whether it is uh, looked as a whole or as an in incomplete, uh, you know, the, the kind of action stuff. The N stem has more to do with active, passive, and kind of some really fun nuances like putting something in a particular state. Um, so what does it look like? Niktal, there, notice that the nifal adds an N to the front. Now you can't count on this. Uh, you, uh, uh, this is a, um, a tool. We're trying to teach you some basics so that you can use Hebrew tools. Not every nun, not every nun on the front of a verb is making something an N. Uh, and so uh, with the basic bare bones of this um, uh, sequence of videos, you're going to need to rely on the cheats to find out it's an end stem. Here is the, for example, look at this. How would you have guessed that that's a nifal? Uh, Yikatel, how would you have guessed that? Now I know that what's happened is um, that nun assimilates when no vowel separates. So. In, in some hypothetical form, this was yin ka tail, and then the nun got
got sucked into the kof, and the kof is doubled as a result of it. Um, you don't have to know that, because there are plenty of cheats to tell you that that second one there is a n imperfect. Um, he uh, will be killed, or something like that. So don't try to, at this point, figure it out, because it's, there's too many possibilities. You just have to, to uh, look it up at this point. Um, the PL stem, uh, or the D stem, Again, there, now there's a couple of, of different ways to do this. Um, remember me talking about stative verbs in the previous video? A stative verb is something like, he is heavy. Actually, I don't remember whether I, I talked about statives um, in the, uh, the form of the video that ended up. Uh, but a stative verb is where uh, you say something like, he is holy, or he is heavy, or he is light. Um, they're verbs that express a state. Uh, so in the G stem, the, the call stem, uh, the verb to be holy means he is holy. Um, he is in this holy state. If you put that in the D stem, then you're talking about putting someone in a holy state, making them holy. And so, see, the G stem of this word would be translated uh, to be holy. But the D stem of this word would be translated to sanctify that is to put into a holy state. Uh, that's for stative verbs. For transitive verbs where the, um, the verb has an object, um, uh, it has a resultative kind of, of, of connotation. And I use this example in my overview of the stems that the, the D stem of the verb to break means to shatter, that is to put into a shattered um, to bring about a shattered result. Um, and so um, the D stem has, has a, a focus on a resultant kind of state. Um, uh, and so what does it look like? It has a doubled second letter. Again, you can't always count on this probably, uh, but, but um, a doubled second letter is a hint that you're looking at a D stem. So yucca tail um, is the imperfect and kitail is the perfect um, version of the D, uh, the D stem. That uh, shava under the performative, the letter on the front of katal, uh, is another hint uh, that you're looking at a D stem of the uh, imperfect. You don't have to know that. Look it up. The pu'al is simply the passive of the D stem. Um, and it tends to have, it still has the doubled. All of these Ds, whether it be the D, the DP, the HTD, that is, the PL, the PUAL, uh, the HITHPAL, all of them will have a doubled second consonant uh, if, again, if the second consonant can double. There's so many exceptions. That's why I just look it up at this point. For example, guttural letters don't do doubling. Ayan, uh, Aleph, He, Chait, they don't double. So. You're not going to get a doubled second consonant if that's the second <laughs> uh, letter. Um, but the, the, in general, the D, the, all the different kinds of D stem will have a doubled second letter. And the passive, the pu'al of the D stem, will have a U vowel under the first letter. Pu, uh, so, ku-tal. Uh, um, and then the perfect, ya ku tal Notice again, the D tends to have a shava under the performative. Um, and a doubled second letter. And you don't have to know that. Look it up. But the passive of the, the D stem there. The hithpael tends to be reflexive of the D stem. So from to gird to to gird yourself. And notice the HT on the perfect form of the top. Hit katel. Um, hithpael is actually uh, these names these names for um, these stems, the older names, the newer names are like HTD and D and DP, but the older names used uh, pa'al, um, the verb to do, as the model verb. What's the problem with it? Well, it's a, it's a weak verb. Uh, why would you use a weak verb as your model verb? Uh, because it doesn't behave normal um, all the time. Um, so, but anyway, uh, hit katel is the perfect, and then yit katel, the hey goes away, um, is the Im imperfect form of the HTD stem. Hyphio tends to be causative, to cause, either to cause the G stem to happen, to cause to kill, or to cause X to do the G stem. So to cause X to kill Y would be another way that the H stem could be um, formulated. There's the uh, perfect form on the top, uh, hic 
teal and the imperfect form on the bottom, yak teal. The, not, the perfect, of course, of the H stem, you're not surprised that the perfect of the H stem would have a hay on the front. But this hirk yod um, between the second and third consonants is another uh, common indicator of the H stem. Uh, and the imperfect of the H stem will tend to have a patak under the performative. Notice, remember that the D stem in its many forms tended to have a shiva under the performative. The hyphia will tend to have a patak under the performative. And then finally we have the, the hofal uh, stem. There are, by the way, some minor stems that are not worth talking about in a video like this. There are a few others, um, weird, weird ones. Um, Hishtakava, uh, that's the HT shin stem. It's only used with one word in Hebrew. Um, but anyway, um, the hofal stem is the passive of the H stem, and uh, so to cause to be killed. Um, and what does it look like? Well, it's going to have, uh, uh, in the perfect, it's going to have a hail on the front again. That's, by the way, a kamaitz katuf. It's a short O, um, um, not, a, uh, not an A. Uh, and then uh, yak tal here, same thing, kamitz katuf, a short O um, in the um, uh, uh, imperfect. So there's a quick overview of the stems. Now, uh, a dictionary like Brown, Driver, and Briggs is going to, a good dictionary is going to divide out the definitions for a verb by stem. So it'll start off giving you the, what the word means in the, in the call stem, then it'll have uh, a section where it tells you what the word means in the PL stem, and then it'll have a section where it tells you, you know, et cetera, what the hyphial and so, so forth. So the dictionary will tell you the nuance that the word has in a particular uh, stem. And more and more stuff is, is free online, and so uh, eventually um, you won't need to have uh, logos or Bible works to be able to access uh, this sort of information. We're still not quite there yet, but we're getting awfully close.